Yes. Okay, there it is. All right, everybody, thanks for your patience. Uh, as promised, we're going to be uh, doing a live corneal tattoo today at Park Avenue Lace Tech, located at 102 East 25th Street off of Park Avenue South. Um, this is Dr. Chin. Uh, this is our patient, Judy. Uh, and that's Mark, our patient coordinator. He'll be taking care of all the questions you guys may have and just letting us know uh, you have any questions. Yeah, go ahead. Just ask away any questions you want. And uh, throughout the um, tattooing itself, we're going to be answering a few questions. Uh, well, actually, we'll be asking Dr. Chin the questions, and he'll be answering them for us. Um, so today we have Judy here with us. Um, her case is a little bit unique, and there are a lot of people out there who may also have a somewhat unique case in that they um, you know, had some kind of an injury, and Judy herself had an injury uh, to one of her eyes. And the issue is um, that the coloring in her eye is now not the way... Sure. Yeah, if you guys can see that up there, uh, the coloring of her eye is not like you know the normal color uh, that an iris would normally have. So you know it's a little bit distracting. And the idea today is because you know she has no functional use in that eye, we're just going to give it the ability uh, to look normal like the other eye and like anyone's normal eye would. Well, the stuff you did before in the other room, we weren't very with the hangout, so you should be right. some questions more Okay, so uh, Judy, before we begin, just uh, give me a little history. Um, what happened to your eye in the first place? I mean, you know, you weren't born this way, right? Okay, so tell me a little bit about it. What was, uh, I know you had an injury, but I, yeah, I don't know what, what it was, but what was the nature of the injury? I'm sorry, say again? An accident when you had a kid. So what, somebody, what, they poked you in the eye or what happened? Oh, firecracker accident. Okay. Uh, well, that's actually pretty, okay. Was a fire, it was a firecracker accident, and how old were you? I was 10 years old. 10 years old. And I used to play firecrackers a lot because, well, I'm Chinese and we just do that kind of stuff. So I had one go off in my ear, but it, it didn't cause that much damage. So what were you doing? Someone throwing it at you or what? Just watching from afar and then just getting to my eye. Okay. okay. So, um, and then well, were you immediately blind or was there a process where they did a bunch of operations and it didn't work out? Actually, I, I was um, losing my eyesight before. Okay, so, um, and then, did you have any, I, it looks like you have a corneal laceration, right? So, did you have a, a doctor in the Philippines uh, sew up the eye or something? Um, they did um, cataract surgery on it before. Uh, and I guess, uh, we ha actually have the referring doctor. You, it's your choice if you want to be on or off camera, if you care, you don't really care. You'll be on camera. So, we've got their uh, Najat, right? Okay. Hello, everybody. So she's like um, eight fake, right? Correct, eight fake, and uh, the main problem is you're going to take care of is, is the color of the cornea. Right. And then I saw the Sure. So over the years, because of the damage from the fireworks, uh, Sherilyn's ability to control the pressure in her eye has has gotten very bad. So the um, the Pressures caused damage to her optic nerve, which caused damage to her vision. So she's lost, unfortunately, all of her vision. And uh, in addition to the pressure being high, it's caused uh, discoloration of her cornea. So hopefully Dr. Chin's going to fix that up today. This is my uh, tech, Katya. Hello. Yeah, so I'm going to just be aware, like, if the microphone's not moving right in front of you, like Dr. Chin, you're asking Yeah, they, they, so they can. Yeah, super question. That word well, should be a better job. Yeah. So, um, okay, so basically she's got a scar. I think she has a little bit of band keratopathy. The previous one we did for um, uh, Discovery Channel, we actually did EDTA chelation. We looked at her. It doesn't look like it's going to be that bad. And then we also did a PTK with a phototherapeutic keratectomy, which is using the laser to remove scar, uh, which we can also do. But uh, I don't think we need it here because she's also not that bad. The reason we had to do with this other person for the Discovery Channel was the surface so irregular that if we tattooed on top of it, we thought the ink would come out and also maybe even looked a little regular, like bulging out. So we took off the calcium chunks with the EDTA and the scraping and also the uh, PTK. But I don't think this is going to be unnecessary with Judy. Okay, so just so uh, the viewers are clear, we'll show her other eye. And it's also good for me because I'm going to try to color match. So the center part of the people, we're going to make black and hopefully the, the other part will make uh, brown, uh, hopefully to match your eye as closely as we can. Uh, there are other ways to do this procedure which is like um, just injecting uh, ink, which I guess we've seen before. 
Um, I think she had something like that in the Philippines, another procedure uh, by a dermatologist in uh, North Carolina. It's better than nothing, but then you wind up with a, a black iris and a black uh, pupil both. So what is that? So, um, uh, so uh, basically, uh, this is a better procedure because you can actually get a, a defined pupil and a defined iris. Okay, so let's just show the viewers what our other light looks like so we can color match. Okay, so. so Dr. Chin now is checking Judy's non-damaged eye to get the perfect shades of brown and black he needs to perfectly color match the iris. So after the corneal tattoo, just like the Discovery Channel patients, even his closest family members won't be able to tell that anything is wrong with the eye. She's, you know, she's uh, typically uh, Asian, uh, like me, and kind of like dark brown. Um, not dark, dark, dark brown, because some people, you know, the brown is so dark, it almost looks black, okay? So we're going to have to try to get some brown and black, okay? So you guys can help me color match. It's also, it, it's easier to color match when you just look without the scope, because there's a lot of reflection, so. So now Dr. Sheehan's going to have a very close look at Judy's eyes and begin matching the ink so it's completely symmetrical with the other one. In fact, after the last corneal tattoo patients, his mother very cruelly said that his damaged eye now looked better than his good one, which I thought was a little bit harsh, but he seemed to get a, a good laugh out of it. I'll put your chin up a little. Dr. Chin just placed the speculum in to keep the eye open. So I just you guys watching uh, at home or wherever, take a look at that TV screen up there. Uh, if you want to see like a more in-depth look uh, throughout the surgery, um, well, actually throughout the tattooing is what I'd say. Uh, so just keep an eye up there, and I'll be going back and forth. You know, cause sometimes of you won't be as easy to see while the tattoo machine is over her eye. Yeah, when, you're going, when you're going back and forth, you can disconnect from the outlet. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So. Dr. Chan, explain a little bit what's going on here. So now we're putting in the speculum. This is the same as uh, we, I'm, I primarily do laser vision correction, lace sac. So we're very, very good about taking off epithelium and letting it grow back. Uh, that's why we're doing cross linking now, which just got FDA approved for people with keratoconus. Um, and a lot of people are doing uh, cross linking with epithelium off. Uh, uh, we're, we're doing it with epithelium off. It's more effective than keeping the epithelium on. There's some people who are doing cross linking with epithelium on. It's because they think the recovery is going to take forever and maybe there's going to be some pain. But because I've done 20,000 lace sex where we take off the epithelium every time, we're really, really good about getting it to grow back. So we're going to take off the epithelium so we can get it at the cornea. This is the first step in uh, lace sex too, in case you're curious about getting your eyes lasered, which is what we primarily do. So. Yeah, so this part of the procedure is identical, as Dr. Chin says, to the 100% non-invasive, non-cutting LASIK that Dr. Chin and Park Avenue LASIK are world-renowned for. Um, so I myself got lasered um, last summer. I was actually 2020 before, so I was the first person in history who already had 2020 vision to get lasered to see better than perfect. So I'm twice as good as 2020 now, and I'm 2010. So the only reason we could do that is because of zero interoperative risk with the LASIK procedure. 100% non-coding, 100% non-invasive, and the structure of your eye after is exactly the same as the structure before. I mean, sports-wise, um, I couldn't hold a putt above six foot um, for many, many years. And even though I only went from 2020 to 2010, which is two lines on the chart, and most of our patients see like a 17-line increase, which is incredible, um, I can still notice this playing golf, tennis, a whole bunch of sports. So while I'm still no master Olympic athlete, it's definitely helped a little bit. So, um, yeah, anyone else who actually has bad vision, I mean, if all I could do is to see better than perfect, surely you should do it to see perfect. So I know Tarek as well also had his procedure done. Yeah, same story. Um, sorry, guys, I'm just kind of actually uh, running the camera at the same time. So, my, oh, yeah, um, so uh, I did my surgery about two and a half years ago, and I was uh, not perfect in my vision, but Dr. Chin actually uh, predicted that he'd make me better than 2015, which is kind of interesting, because I was uh, the first patient he had ever predicted that he would make better than 2015, and uh, sure enough, better than 2020 now, and interestingly enough, there's also uh, a trademark that Dr. Chin just uh, got approved for. And it's uh, 2015 and 2015, since uh, the vast majority of our patients now are seeing better than 2020 after their LASIK surgery. 
Uh, now we actually are issuing a challenge to all of our patients. If you're uh, if you're not better than 2020 after the surgery, uh, you actually get all your money back. So if you're interested in that, visit our uh, website, Park Avenue LASEK. That's L A S E K dot com uh, for more information. Come on in for a free consult. See if it works for you. But uh, I kind of wish that that was an offer that was around back when uh, when I was doing my surgery. Because I mean, I would have definitely uh, you know gotten the whole thing done for free myself. So uh, yeah, if you if you're considering doing the story, you're worried about the cost, then, uh, you know, if you're only 2020 at the end of it, you still get all your money back. So I would definitely check that out. Yeah, most definitely. And so, Dr. Shane, explain a little bit now. Otherwise, you're going to disconnect from the power. And then move it over there? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I'm already disconnected with the power, so I can move right That's my phone. You can feel his own thing. Oh, I see what you mean. Tarek is maneuvering slightly closer to the screen, so we can see and um, right up close. Yeah. So now we can see extreme, extreme close-up of Judy's eye. Now, this particular procedure is incredibly rare. Dr. Chen is one of I mean, three surgeons in the entire country who have actually trained with this. Um, some tattoo artists would go off on a limb and try to inject the ink into the eyeball themselves. If you do have a similar issue, do not go down that route. Um, so Dr. Shane and Park Avenue Lessex specializing in treating cases that no other center either will or can. And so I know this one's extremely rare, but even if you have an extreme prescription in corneas, really high astigmatism, you might have been told you couldn't be helped. Don't believe that until you've actually met Dr. Chin and come in for a consultation. So Dr. Chin is just removing the epithelium now. So what, what are you just, you could ask me like what where I learned this from when I put this up. Yeah, so Dr. Chin, um, just refresh our memories. How exactly did you learn how the corneal tattoo? It was extremely, extremely rare. Uh, so basically, um, you just come the other way more, and then later on this later, like, we're going to try it. Yeah, so um, it just make it close. So I learned it from uh, Doyle Stolte, who's, I mean, he's a really famous cornea surgeon in the United States. Um, uh, he's, he was just president recently, like two years ago, of Azimuth, which is like the number one organization for cataracts and refractive surgery. So he told me how to do this, and I did a fellowship at Emory and Cornea Refractive after his mind on um, uh, relegated uh, ophthalmology heart. So I'm going to do the easy part first. We're going to load some blanks and get the people. So, dude, you're going to have to pick something to look at, or else Okay, so Dr. Chain is now going to start matching the very center first, which is the darkest yeah. points, and then work around the outside. That's the easiest one, and he can then adjust the lighter brown on the outside as he goes, based on what we see on the darkness going in. So Dr. Chain, this is just a, a regular tattoo machine? Well, we got a special machine because you want it to oscillate really slowly, so otherwise it's kind of hard to control. So the oscillations go around really a lot. It's a, that's like, you know, it's really, really low in hertz, okay? Uh, I guess that's like 2.8 hertz, right? It's three oscillations a, a second, okay? And then um, the, uh, the, the travel we have to decrease because you don't want to perforate. Now, this is a blind eye, but you still don't want to perforate. And um, we got a three-cluster needle. And a lot of times you get ten cluster to cover more area on the arm. We just want delicate. One one needle's not the best because then you don't get any coverage and it winds up looking less of even action. Okay. So okay. So you gotta you gotta fix it on something. So you gotta pick something to look at with that. So Dr. Chin is just getting Judy to fixate on a point now so her eye stays in the same place so he can tattoo us as accurately as possible. So Dr. Chin is now beginning the actual tattooing itself. As I said, it's going to go for the very darkest part in the middle first, and then work outwards to color match the brown around the outside. So as you can see, ink is getting put in.
we can make the pupil as big as you want it. So you, I'm assuming you want it to be like a medium-sized pupil for daytime, because you know what could make the pupil bigger for nighttime. But you you, you kind of want a medium-sized pupil for daytime, right, Judy? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so Dr. Chan was just saying there, um, the size of the pupil that Judy wants tattooed because people's pupils get larger at night time. Um, so Judy's going to go for just the standard daytime one because obviously her tattoo is going to be most visible during the daytime. So we want it matched up perfectly with the other eye during the daytime. So as you can see, this is an extremely, extremely delicate procedure. Even though the eye has no vision in it, um, Dr. Chin has to be still extremely, extremely careful not to perforate. Um, so you can see the, the touch that goes into this. So Dr. Chin, how much of the ink actually stays in there? Is it on the surface, in the surface? Explain a little bit. Yeah, it's a good question. Like, the, you know, a tattoo, you're trying to make it subdermal, right? So you have to go through the epithelium into the dermis, and a lot of it's on the surface. So you're, you're going to see intermittently, I'm going to rinse out with BSS, balanced salt solution, and try to see how much is retained into the cornea. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay. So yeah, he, he, he tattoos the ink in first, then, in layman's terms, washes it out a little bit to see how much is actually stuck in there. So that's exactly what he's doing now. Yeah, so you can see on the monitor, we got, you know, we, we did get pretty good, pretty good centration, pretty good penetration. I, I, I want to make it a little bit darker, I think, so I'm going to just do it again. Okay, so he's going to add a little bit more in. And as you can hear, Judy isn't squealing in pain, so there's local anesthetic drops. Um, we also gave Judy some Valium, just like our LASIK patients. So everyone who either does a corneal tattoo or a non-cutting LASIK, you don't actually feel anything, so it's actually a little bit more squeamish to watch it than actually do it yourself, right, Dr. Chen? Yeah, the other guy on Discovery Channel, he had a much bigger procedure because it was like a EDTA chelation and a manual debridement and a scraping and a PTK. We, we blocked him. We injected a needle behind his eye and blocked him, and he didn't feel anything. That's what you do for cataract surgery. Uh, she's not going to need it. It's a much more superficial thing. Okay, very interesting. So we have we have 13 viewers now, guys. So um, you, you, you've slowly trended up as time goes on. So just um, keep doing what you're doing, and I'm I'm monitoring the events page. And so you can see what the guys were saying earlier about the, the hertz on the needle being slowed way down to give Dr. Chin as much control as humanly possible over the amount of ink that's coming out onto the onto the eye. And it looks like he's doing a great job so far at it. So now I think we should start uh, doing the uh, iris and try to color match, okay, so. Okay, so now it's on to the, the outer part, the iris, um, which requires even more skill in terms of matching it with the other one. So as you can see, Dr. Chain is now actually mixing the brown and black. This is specially diffused ink as well to have the smallest particles possible. Now you can see as Tarek is giving you a bird's eye view of exactly how the, the tattoo machine is working. So this is actually a camera that is attached to the laser on the underside of it. That's how we can get such extreme close-ups. It gives you a very good idea of what's happening at a very, very close angle. So I hope you guys are finding this interesting and beneficial. Um, I know I do, even though I've actually seen one of these before, so I'm probably one of the very few people in America who has, but this is still fascinating. Um, no. So guys, yeah, keep your questions rolling. Um, we're more than happy to answer them. So you can see there how much more ink um, has gone in. So now we're really motoring in terms of what we're hoping to achieve, what Dr. Chin's hoping to achieve for Judy with a final result.
Are you guys seeing the questions come in? Matt? Okay, so Dr. Sheen, you're still going around the outsides there trying to match the brown? Yeah, so I'm trying to do, you know, do an iris, and I think, you know, you can start to see an iris. Uh, you know, we can look at the monitor a little bit. I have a better view than you guys, so, um, you know, already it's cosmetically better than before. I think I want to get the black blacker. I don't know if I want to get the brown browner because you don't want to get it browner than her, her iris. So we could compare the two irises now there. Oh, cool. So we just got a question. Um, of course, I won't divulge the name, but somebody here wants to know um, what exactly, not what exactly, but like, uh, I'm trying to like, put it in layman's terms with a lot of like errors on it, but they read an article recently, and I read the same article too, about how there's a new thing now where people can turn their brown eyes to blue, and they were wondering if this is like something similar in that area or if it's something like entirely different and if you would recommend doing that sort of thing. It's a good question. Um, there's two ways to change your iris color. This is mostly for people with brown eyes who want blue or green eyes. Uh, one way is they have these titanium implants that you can insert inside the eye on top of the iris. We had a patient do that uh, a year ago. She went to, I think, Saudi Arabia or somewhere in the Middle East for that. I did the pre-op and the post-op work here. Um, it turned out okay. The only problem is um, it's not FDA approved because it's a little risky because you're inside the eye. If you could get an infection, you could go blind. and could cause Sometimes it causes bleeding because your iris moves and it dilates and closes and then it chafes and you could actually get bleeding on your iris and, and, and maybe cause glaucoma. So I don't think that's ever going to be FDA approved. I didn't suggest you had it done. I really didn't think it was worth the risk-benefit ratio. Um, the other thing you could do is they came up with a laser uh, that you could depigment the iris and uh, most people don't know that the iris doesn't have different colors. So when someone has blue eyes, there's no blue pigment in that. That's a diffraction pattern. So it's just less brown. It's just like butterfly wings. A lot of butterfly wings and flowers, there's no pigment in them. It's just different degrees of brown, and if it's a certain diffraction pattern, then light bounces off of it, and it looks blue or it looks green. So if you depigment the brown and just remove some of the brown, it, it can look blue and it can look green. The problem with that is the pigment has to go somewhere. Normally it goes into the, to the trabecular meshwork, which is the drainage of the eye, and then you can get glaucoma again. So again, I don't think that one's going to be approved. Um, I did work with uh, Marco Latina at Harvard, who's a big laser inventor. He invented SLT, and um, you know, 20 years ago I had a conversation with Mark. We're trying to investigate that. And we abandoned that because really I think it's going to cause glaucoma and again will probably never be FDA approved. Um, this is much safer because it's outside of the eye. I don't know if they'd really be willing to do this in somebody who's seeing. Um, you could do it, okay? Uh, you really could. I mean, I could tattoo a cornea and make them blue or green. It is safer than either one of those things. But cosmetically, it might not be as good. In this case, it's better because it's, it's, you know, it's totally safe because uh, she's not seeing this eye. So you can see the, the brown and the black, and we're going to just every, have everyone try to color match for me. So, um. I can give time for one more question, or should we hold it? Up? Okay. So I do have another question here. Um, this question actually seems a little bit unrelated to the tattoo itself, but they said that they had a uh, prior LASIK done, the cutting version that you stopped doing about 10 years ago, and they're having some issues like with their nighttime vision and all that. So in that case, would it be worth it to like try doing any kind of like eye tattoo on that eye because it's only one eye that's having an issue seeing at night or like would that run the risk of maybe doing more damage or just have no effect on it? Well, look, you, you don't do a tattoo when you have night glare. In other words, I, I don't know why this hasn't gotten out there because, uh, you know, the reason I switched from LASIK to LASIK is I had LASIK myself. I was the first doctor in New York City to get LASIK eye doctor and I have night glare because inherently with LASIK you have a little bit of night glare because you have a flap and you have some refraction or reflection off of that flap interface and you get night glare. So it's still a good procedure. I'm happy I did it. The daytime vision's fine, but I don't have great night vision and I do have a Ferrari and it's not great driving, I think, at night. So uh, that's why I switched to LASIK from LASIK about 10 years ago. I did 5,000 uh, LASIKs and now I'm doing all LASIK. So uh, basically, anybody with night glare, there were some people like this in Dr. Oz, all you really have to do is have a LASIK on top of your LASIK with a wider zone and do custom view. It's a custom ablation or custom pattern of correcting the uh, prescription, and we could really get rid of the night glare. So anybody who's got night issues, you just need a LASIK uh, custom view on top of your LASIK flap, and, and we can simulate that with a preview lens. So you just come in for that and look through the preview lens. If you're happy, you do it. If you're not happy, 
uh, you don't do it. I guess Mark and Tara can discuss it a little bit more preview while I get more of the uh, people done. So when Dr. Chin is um, just continuing to match up to get the, the perfect people color matched up, um, I'll just explain a little bit about how the preview lens he just mentioned um, works. So the preview lens is actually what made me decide to get lasered even though I was 2020. Basically how it works is we take all the high definition treatment figures, so it's 25 times more accurate than glasses or contacts. Not only that, it also corrects 50 different prescriptions on 50 different points in the eye. So what we do is we take the high definition information and the figures that we're going to put into the laser, shoot them onto a small lens, and then the patient can actually look through the lens and see what their high definition vision would be like afterwards. It's extremely cool. As I said, I was sort of on the fence being 2020 already. I didn't, I wasn't 100% sure of the, the benefits I'd get from it, but once I looked through that preview lens, I was absolutely sold. Um, so I'd highly recommend it. If you're on the fence and you don't really realize what you'd see after your laser, it's, it's the best investment you can ever make. I genuinely mean that. So you see Dr. Chin is once again adding more ink to the, the center just to get a little bit darker in the middle. So it looks like, uh, let's say we have another question here. Um, somebody here wants to know how long does this last because they've had tattoos on their arms that seem to be fading and they have to always like touch them up every couple of years and all that. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, the guy we did a few years ago, uh, I forget his name, he was, uh, he's actually the limo driver for Mr. Ralph Lauren. Uh, he was just outside our glass operating room, double park, and he saw me doing a lace sec. And he came in and says, hey, can you help me out? I said, I can't help you out visually because you know, that eye is blind. He said, no, I don't mean laser vision correction. I mean something else because it seems like a pretty cutting edge. So, yeah, we did him a few years ago. It's just like an arm tattoo. It kind of fades over time after a few years, and you need a touch-up. So I would say it's, it's really, really good cosmetically for like three years. Definitely by five with the eye eyeball tattoos and you do. Is psychologically, people are afraid to touch up. It can be really easy, and it's no big deal. Just like I guess if you, like I have no tattoos on my body, but I guess the second, third tattoo, the people are just like they're not afraid about it. So I think most of it's not. There's no pain. It's like psychological discomfort. It, unlike a skin tattoo, we know about the eye. I'm an MD, so I could inject the eye and do all these things to move it up. So it's not painful like a regular tattoo. You, you guys can also, as I finish up, maybe talk a little bit about eye jewelry because that's a related procedure that the tattoo audience would probably be interested in. We're, we're trying to combine the eye jewelry with it, that too. Yeah, so as Dr. Chin is just finishing up, um, we'll speak a little bit about the eye jewelry as well. Um, Dr. Chin made history, um, ophthalmic history, last year when he became the first eye surgeon in any of the Americas to implant um, a piece of eye jewelry made out of platinum onto, it was, it's, it's, a sur it's on the surface. So if you think it's risky, it's not. Um, you know, well, there's no visual risk to it because the uh, the jewelry itself was on the white part of the eye, which has you know no fun no effect on you know what you can and can't see, um, and also the fact that it was platinum since it was like um, very inert. Yeah, it was inert metal, so I mean your body was less likely to reject it and all that. So as far as like visual issues go, you don't have to worry about oh my god, what if I lose my vision? As far as the jewelry goes, and as far as this tattoo in this situation goes. Judy's eye is already not functional, so there's no risk of losing any kind of, uh, you know, visual acuity. It's just an issue more of, you know, you just want it to be aesthetically pleasing, so it's not distracting when you know, you're meeting people, talking to somebody, that sort of thing. Right. Yeah. So, the eye jewelry, and it was a very nice Russian girl, um, and. Eastern European girls have a tendency. I don't. I'm not going to tire everyone with the same brush, but the bling is the bling is the thing. Oh, stereotypes <laughs> for a reason. Um, so yeah, very very kind of flash orientated, but she wanted to stand out from the crowd, be different, and she certainly went around the right way of doing that. She had so many great comments from people wishing her well. Of course, in the internet social media age, she of course also had some. Some trolling, um, which is to be expected, but that, that was really from a lack of knowledge from the people who were giving her grief about the procedure she chose to have. Um, so, I mean, Dr. Chin wouldn't countenance doing that sort of procedure unless he believed it was safe. Um, I mean, you can imagine the body parts that people tattoo and pierce, you see what I'm saying? So, I, I, it's unimaginable to me what some people want to get pierced. But, 
you know, the eye jewelry is outside of the eye. It's totally sterile. It, you just make a little incision in the conjunctiva, and then you drop in the eye uh, jewelry implant. It's from Holland. It's uh, curved to the eye, and it's just made for, for eyes. It's custom made. We have hearts and stars and clovers, and if somebody wanted to do it, they could even put in an Apple logo or whatever. Uh, and it's outside the eye, so the risk of blindness is zero. And then it, the conjunctiva just heals over the scar, which is the white part of the eye. And then when you look to the side, you can see it. The only thing that the Russian girl didn't like was it's, it's platinum, which is silver colored, not white. It's not that blingy. So I think if the next one we, we do, they probably want some kind of field of you know, purple or red or something, and then you put the thing on top of it. So as long as we consent them that it's the, the, the tattoo is semi-permanent, you know, it takes years. Die Joe, you can pop that thing out in five minutes, and she did have it removed. So. Yeah, so anyone out there who either is interested in the corneal tattooing um, or the eye jewelry, Dennis Rodman, I'm looking at you, and um, just check out our website, parkavenuelasek.com. So Park is in Park, Avenue is in Avenue, Lasek, L-A-S-E-K.com. And you'll find a whole treasure trove of information there, both about the bread and butter for Dr. Chin, which is Lasek, laser vision correction, and the slightly more unusual procedures. Uh, Dr. Chin's always trying to push the boundaries of ophthalmology. He's actually going to laser himself this year, correct, Dr. Chin? Yeah, I'm going to do a LASIK on myself to try to demonstrate to the world that LASIK is than LASIK because you certainly can't cut a flap in yourself. So I hope we have some faraway pictures from her because, you know, up close, uh, whatever. But far away, it's going to look a million times better cosmetically. So I guess you have to take some faraway pictures free, right? So um, I guess what we should do now is uh, I think it looks good. You know, we could take a little vote for the audience. And then I guess we could have her look and look in the mirror and see if she wants more or anything like that. Or we could bring a mirror in. So you want to just get a mirror? So I'm going to have Dr. Luce, one of my fellows, get a mirror. We, we have the largest uh, refractive fellowship in the United States, by the way. So right now we have a doctor from Jordan. We have a doctor from China. We just had two doctors from Ukraine, actually, I'll go back and try to help their country out. So we've had about 20 fellows from maybe 10 or 12 different countries. And it's really it's a really nice program. So I guess if anyone out there is a, a, a resident in another country, ophthalmology, they could come for a refractive fellowship. Okay, so what do you guys in the audience here think about the, the color match and the, you think we should do more? I think it's pretty good to check the next one. Um, I mean, honestly, it looks like it's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say it's actually, it's much, much better than it was before. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Looks very good. I think you get a little bit more down in fairly. Yeah, really like that. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, yeah. You want to get that rounded off. Yeah, I got to round it off because it looks a little odd right now. So it's good. another reason it's good to have more surgeons on the OR. So I'll just touch that up. So. Just to be clear, everyone, what you're looking at right there is all ink. That's not anything else. Don't get squeamish. It's just ink that's on the uh, the sheet over there. So I'm sure every every person watching this um, did some color by numbers as they were younger. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is not color by numbers. Okay, so just to make that clear, and um, just because you think it looks cool, and Dr. Chin makes it look easy, um, got, you got to go to a, an ophthalmologist, a surgeon. Yeah, can you say that you can't put on a tattoo guy for this? Because they're not legally allowed to do this, and there have been some problems on the internet. You'll see with really bad eye tattoos that some tattoo person did. So you really have to do go to an eye surgeon. You know, not a tattoo artist for the eyes. So yeah, we're getting close to the end there. Wow, it, it looks it's night and day yet. I think we have one more question here. So just uh, Dr. Chin. Is it all freehand you drawing, or does the ink automatically settle into a circular um, pattern? Well, Dr. Chin's just finishing up. So this, this is a freehand technique. You know, we don't have like a template or stencil, but you know, the, even though the cornea is you know 0.5, yeah, if you have like maybe uh, if you use your yeah, what if you use, uh, can you have a flashlight uh, on the application? So, um, yeah, they could do it.
It's good, right? <laughs> hey, how do you how do you know each other? Well, oh, they work together. Yeah, so you could interview the colleague a little bit, so. Yeah, it's much better, right? So look, we could do a little bit yeah. now, or we could do a little bit later. You you want you want more brown or or you, you want more brown, you wanna It's almost the same brown, right? Yeah. So you could do a little bit lighter because I could mix the I could mix the brown with like saline to get it lighter. But the problem is the tattoo washes out over time, so you really want it darker to begin with because it gets lighter and lighter. You know what I'm saying? If we made it the same lightness, it's going to be too light, I think. So um, I think it looks good. So why don't we just keep it like this? And if you need a touch up in a month, we could do that touch up, no problem. Um, but certainly looks a lot better. Uh, than it was before. So you want to just you know get some reaction shot from her. So Judy, just on the eyes. How was it? Not bad. Not bad. No. Just look at the camera really quick. Yeah. Like night and day. What a difference. So yeah, you have to bear in mind as well, after seeing it myself, um, it looks much better a week out as opposed to right after the procedure. Um, it'll look, even though it looks it's a huge improvement now, it's going to be massively, massively improved um, by the time Judy comes back and sees us for, for a post-operative appointment. Um, Dean just needs to settle down a little bit and... Yeah, the, the tattoo itself will look even better in a week's time than it does now. Okay. okay. So, guys, I hope you uh, found that interesting. Guys. Um, extremely unusual. Can you, so, what's your back to the car? Sure. Can you hear us? Okay, so... We're just going to move over here. Okay, I will leave that to Dr. Yeah. Can you guys, can you guys sure. hear us? You can. Because I think the sclera is still swollen, so the roundness of the iris is not really. Yeah. Can you hear me? Better doing it. Yeah, it's better. Let's see. Let's I just had a quick question for you. Um, did, did you feel any pain? How was it? You know. There's no pain. I just okay. feel the the touch. The you felt like the pressure with the touch itself, and not the pain. That's good because my understanding is tattoos are not exactly the most comfortable thing to get in the world. So that's good. Um, okay. So then, actually, now there's one more step to this uh, aside from the tattoo itself. So I'm gonna let Doctor Chin and Doctor Belushek just have a look at the angles right now. So yeah, this is Dr. Alush, Dr. Chin's fellow. He's going to explain a little bit about this extremely, extremely rare um, lens we're going to use to help protect Chin's eye. Hey, hey who's it? Uh, hey, so man. I'm Dr. Alush. Uh, I'm Dr. Chin's fellow. I came from Jordan to later from Dr. Chin, refractive surgery, LASIK service procedure, and Dr. Chin, you learn from uh, like three thousand. <laughs> Before I came in, but yeah, but I just want to learn from Dr. Chin the like all the latest approaches and latest techniques in LASIK uh, and um, uh, some other stuff. Like Dr. Chin today, he, Dr. Chin today he did. Dr. Chin, Did you want to opt at some point? I would take all the um, take the pieces. Just stop with the hundred. It's easier to do. It's actually well, it's easier to do before you hide. But you bring your second one. Okay. Okay. So 
Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, they say. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's very well before you hide it. It's paper thin, like a wave. Yeah, once it really gets, thin. what's going to happen though when you lift it up now? It's going to fold on itself. Yeah. You're going to do it when it's still. There we go. I can see your video again. The back. I'm looking at. Yes. Hey Ryan. Hey. Hey. Um. So I'm being told by uh, our front desk guy that we lost the feed. Yeah, you did. Um. At at the last point there, when you were actually interviewing her, that's I, I couldn't see any of that. Uh oh. Um, yeah. I've tried restarting Hangouts. It's up. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Supposedly we're back. Can you on your end? Yes, it's back. I can see you. You you were you were not on for about the last ten minutes. Just just on. before. Oh great! So the money shot. You had... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Exactly. You missed you missed the money shot. You had fourteen viewers at one point. You had I uh, or actually fifteen sixteen viewers at one point and and people coming in and out the whole time. Okay. Um. All right. Well, if we're still on, then we're not done. We got to add some stuff anyway. So I'm just gonna plug back yeah. into this and keep going. Yeah. Right. So I, I would I would re-interview her when she's there, and then and then get the feed and and show exactly like at the end there. You gotta you gotta show that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we got uh, just two more steps to go, and then we'll do the interview. All right. Thanks a lot. I'm gonna plug okay. back in this microphone, so I'm not gonna be able to hear you. Okay. Uh, we had a little bit of technical difficulties there, but looks like we're back online. So hopefully you're all still with us because. Uh, we want to talk to Judy when she's done, but we do have one more thing that we're going to add to it. Um, so let me give this over to our uh, fellow of Dr. Chin, Dr. H. Can you just explain one more time because uh, we got cut off from the feed um, what we're going to be adding to Judy that helps with the motor healing? Well, this is the AmbuDisc. It's basically an amniotic membrane where we take it from, you know, the placenta and the feed, the membrane that's around the fetus when he's in his, when the mother, is, when he's like, Still fetus. There's a membrane around him. That sounds disgusting. You know, for the actual layman. For the actual layman, no, really, I mean, sure it does. But like, I'm sure there's a good reason for why, though, right? So why are we doing that? Because the healing, uh, the healing of this amniotic membrane is extremely perfect. Extreme, extremely good. That's why we put this amniotic membrane on the cornea, where we, where the healing process will be much better than if it heals by itself. Because these are like, you know, the like fresh cells or whatever they are. So uh, how much faster would you say the difference is between if we were to use this special kind of lens or if we were just to like just let it be on its own? Like, What's the difference between the two? Well, it's going to be like much faster. Like if we, if we leave it by itself, it's going to be like normal cornea. If you want to put 
bandage is going to take like instant. It will heal by itself. It's going to take like five to seven days. For them to complain, it's going to be much faster, like two or three days. And uh, uh, add, adding to this, she, since her cornea is not like in perfect shape, she might not heal properly. She, was, she might end up with like uh, a heal defect, permanent heal effect, non-healing also. That's why we, are, we put this bandage contact lens from amniotic membrane uh, to make sure that it heals just properly. Fine. Okay, guys. So we're just waiting right now. Dr. Chin is, uh, I believe, just preparing... I'm sorry. Oh, okay. So actually, let me just move on over so we can uh, Okay, actually, interesting. I didn't know we are going to have somebody here today who is actually a representative of the amniotic membrane that we're using to promote Judy's faster healing. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Say hi. Hi. Tell us I'm... So um, I'm with IOP, and we have Ambu Disc, and it's amniotic membrane dehydrated. So you're going to place it onto the ocular surface, and it's going to assist with healing um, of the cornea. So let me just ask a really quick question about that. Um, when you say assisting with the healing of the cornea, can I ask, but in layman's terms, how does it promote like an accelerated healing? Um, the amniotic disc has different layers um, that has cytokines and um, just if you've ever heard of um, amniotic tissue in wound healing um, with diabetics, it just has anti-inflammatory factors, um, a collagen layer, everything that's inducive to kind of assist with the healing process. Okay. Makes sense. All right. And I think we're just about ready to get started on placing that lens in, so let's get in there and jump in here really quick. Judy has a couple of quick questions about the outcome of the tattoo. One of the many benefits of not going under while doing this, because then you can actually do a little bit of like critique going back and forth, you know, add a little here, a little there. It's like going to the barber pretty much. Take a little off the top, a little off the side. That's it. So I'm going to jump in over here because I'm running a little below on battery. Quick thing. This. Step on it. Oh, that. Did I close Kino grab work? Mark? Yeah. Sorry, I am back, and Dr. Shin's just putting a little bit, what, a little wider circle is what's going on? Yeah, uh, he, he wants, he wants, look straight, yeah, he, she wanted wider. Look, I'm actually going maybe past the cornea or something like that, because there was some scarring or cicatrization, so we might get a little bit of blood. You gotta, you gotta try not to twitch your eye, okay? Okay, so Dr. Shane's gonna add a little bit more numbing medication. 
Just going in under. A little bit more numbing medication going in, just as Dr. Chen wants to get this absolutely perfect for the patient. Just putting a little bit more numbing medication onto the cornea. It's just a local anesthetic. Um, Judy's, as you can see, aware, awake, and giving a little bit of feedback as well, which is good. The upper one? Yeah, that area right there. There you go. Perfect. Looks good. So as you can see, Dr. Chin's adding a little bit more brown to the iris part around the edge sides. Judy just wanted a little bit more. You're going to see some blood or heme because we're going past the cornea into her sclera. And there's a little bit of a vascular arcade at the limbus, which is the junction of the cornea and the sclera. Okay, that was quite technical, but yeah, the main takeaway is you might see a little bit of blood. Don't worry. She did have some scarring on the cornea before. By the spare is the white part of the eye. The cornea is obviously the part of the eye you're using to see. So since we're going beyond that, see because it's like a clear window. You know, I'm just trying to put in more layman's terms for the audience at home. Uh, just to explain why there's going to be a little bit of blood, but you know, we're a little bit too far away from the screen itself for you to see it, so don't worry too much. So yeah, Judy's nearly done now. She did great. So yeah, the last uh, corneal tattoo we did, guy is a really really nice guy. Um, Kind of shy his whole life because of because of um, the trauma he got to his eye. But afterwards, he actually said to us, he came in and gave Dr. Chen a hug and said he could look people in the eye for the first time in his life. So it was quite inspiring. So hopefully, Judy experiences a similar sort of reaction to her corneal tattoo. Okay, Judy's companion is just going around to. Yep, that is Judy's work colleague. As you can see, even though Dr. Chin is the one performing the surgery, it is a collaborative effort. And as far as that, we really want to give the patient what she wants. So that's why Dr. Chin is going in, doing a little. Yeah. Remember, we, um, Dr. H took them there a little too close, so Judy sent them herself to us as well. Yep. So that's pretty much it. What, what's going on there, Dr. Chen? The, the embryonic membrane lens? Uh, it's an embryonic membrane graft. It's not a lens. On top of it, we're going to put a bandage contact lens. So. Oh, so Dr. Halush explained a little bit about the, the science behind using this lens. Science behind using this graph. So the tattoo part of the procedure is itself over now. So Dr. Elush, explain please exactly what Dr. Chin is doing here. 
Right, so let's give the audience a little background on the, the graph, what it's used for, etc. So the amnesia complaint graph is used primarily to promote healing of the coronal epithelium. It's mainly if you have like if, if, if we have a disease where coronal epithelium is not healing because of some uh, problems with healing, we use the amniotic membrane to promote uh, healing process. So with this case, since she, we did the coronal tattooing to her eye, we removed the epithelium, which is the skin of the eye. And after that, we need the, the healing to be almost perfect to uh, to help her eye not to get infected even though if, she, if, she, if she's not seeing with it. That's why we put this bandage contact lens or, or the amniotic membrane to promote healing of the epithelium. So, Dr. Chen, you're just smoothing out the graph a little bit? Yeah, I mean, he can narrate right now. It's basically that it's a little bit folded, and uh, Dr. Nizad has more experience in this because he's used it more. The reps, you know, I mean, she got experience because she's seen this like a thousand times. So, I just want to get it unfolded, and then I'll just move it in place. So, it's pretty unfolded now. So, I can just, I can just slide it back. Yeah, so basically, now the, the, the ambu disc now is unfolded. Now, Dr. Chin will centralize it in the middle of the cornea. Okay. So, what, usually, what do you do? What do you? Why do you use the ambu disc for? Usually, I'm using the ambu disc uh, in pterygium surgery, which is a growth of tissue that comes across the surface of the eye. And once you remove it, there's a defect that needs to be uh, restored. So, you use the ambu disc uh, and the amniotic membrane for that. We also use it in a lot of uh, corneal procedures, whenever you remove epithelium, as you discussed earlier, it promotes the healing. So anytime there's a recurrent erosion uh, or what was called a filamentary keratitis is a patient who has a very dry eye and the uh, surface of it doesn't heal, it becomes very rough. We can use it in corneal ulcers, which is an infection on the cornea for patients uh, who wore contact lenses uh, and they get an infection so that uh, this will help promote healing, reduce the amount of inflammation, reduce the number of drops we need to use uh, to help them heal faster. And are your patients happy after that? I mean, with the follow-up visits, are they okay? Well, the, the really nice thing about the ambio disc is that it's very comfortable. Uh, you, you can put this on, you put a contact lens over it, and patients are very, very comfortable. Uh, it's, it, it works 24-7, so it's always there, unlike drops, which only work when you put them in. Uh, the patients don't have to do anything, uh, so they're quite happy, and, and all patients are happy when they get better. Just to remind that these, this, these the ambio discs just dissolve by itself. So you don't, we don't have to remove them. They just stay there. Okay. Well, are we happy? Like, are your patients like, after a year or two? Okay. Are you, are patients satisfied with, with the results after like the ambu disc dissolves completely? Yes. You know, I mean, every once in a while you have to use the ambu disc. You have to use more than one depending upon how bad the uh, patient's original problem is. Uh, but once uh, once you've used them and used them successfully, the patients are very happy. Uh, I'm using amniotic membrane weekly uh, for my surgical uh, cases, and probably in the office for probably once or twice uh, a month uh, on patients that are referred in with uh, problems uh, that require its, its use. So now Dr. Chen just put a bandage contact lens, which is just a regular contact lens, over the ambu disc to stabilize it. And he puts antibiotic eye drops to prevent infection. 
and, the, and some steroid to prevent inflammation as well. Surgery is done now. Okay, so Judy is all done now. Okay, so that is the procedure done. I hope all you guys found it fascinating. I know I did. I know Judy's going to be very happy. Um, I just want to get some final words from her before we, we call it an evening. Okay guys, so as you can see we're having a little look outside, it's the only glass, all glass operating room in the country and um, the only reason we can do that is because all we do here at Park Avenue Lysec is 100% non-cutting Lysec. If we were doing the older cutting like sick procedure, it would be insane to have people, anyone walk by um, what would the complications from cutting a flap that can occur. So the only reason we can have this beautiful glass operating room is because there's zero interoperative risks with the 100% non-invasive like, sec procedure. Dr. Shane and his preceptors actually helped invent at Harvard. So I should give you a great confidence vote in Dr. Chin, the procedure itself, and as I said before, um, we specialize in treating cases that others can't and won't. Um, so it doesn't mean you have to have a damaged eye aesthetically. Um, this means you have to be wearing glasses or contacts. And if whether or not somebody tells you you can or can't have LASIK, you could definitely have LASIK. So it won't be an issue. But I remember I'm, I'm actually having like a little trip down memory lane. I'm looking at this sandwich board right now. Before I had my surgery without my contacts in, I couldn't read this at all. And then when I sat up right afterwards, I was able to see that Bank of America sign. I was even able to see the uh, the street signs across the street. And I remember like that was kind of strange for me because I wasn't. I don't even remember the last time I was able to see without glasses or contacts. To be quite honest with you. So where did our? She's just, just gone to the restroom real quick. Okay. Um, Dr. Chen, how did how did you think everything went? Everything went good. Uh, I think everything went very well. Um, she's gonna have a very good cosmetic appearance. Obviously, you know, you can tell uh, it's not a normal eye from a few inches away, especially on magnification. From five or ten feet away, or really more likely, uh, normal uh, distance, which is, you know, ten, fifteen feet away, it should look really good. That's why I was saying that we have to make sure we get some more pictures from uh, one inch away, because we want to emphasize how good it is cosmetically to the casual observer, not somebody who's two inches from her face. Yeah, so we'll be sure to post those on our social media. Check us out on Facebook, Park Avenue Lysec. Check us out on Twitter, at SafeSize. Check us out on Instagram, Park Ave Lysec. Um, and we'll post up some pre- and post-op ones, as Dr. Chin says. We'll, we'll give it so you can actually have a little bit of perspective, and you'll see the greatest difference in between pre- and post-corneal tattoo. Um, so the patient has just gone briefly, and um, well, we just tidy to up, and we just... We just want to ask like our Right. So yeah, so we just want to ask her how she thought everything went. Stay tuned for that. Is there any pain? Okay, so we'll go grab. Okay, guys, we are rolling out of the all glass operating room into the waiting area. Park Avenue, Lysac. So over here we have. Lead me and I'll follow you. Take care. So over here we have. Um, over here we have the wave scan, the orb scan machine. The wave scan is the machine that lets us treat more accurately than glasses or contacts, and 25 times more accurately, also 50 different points in the eye it captures prescriptions on. So it's an absolutely amazing piece of technology. Um, myself and Tarek both had the high definition procedure. That's why we are both better than 2020. Um, over here we have an orb scan machine. It just takes like a topography map of your cornea, which is extremely cool. Yeah, you can actually see one right there. Um, so another thing that some people have is kind of unusual. It's called keratoconus. Um, FDA actually just approved a procedure to treat this keratoconus disease. It's a 
degenerative condition, um, if not treated, can lead to the need for corneal transplant. So that means like sewing a dead person's cornea into <laughs> into someone living's cornea. So yeah, um, we actually are cross-linking here as well. We just finished a case right before um, Judy went in for her corneal tattoo. So it's been an unusual day, to say the least. Um, so I think we are going to see Judy now for an immediate post-op, or are we going to go to the couch? Uh. I think she's going to be, I don't know, where is she actually? Is that you? So we're just going to have a quick word with Judy now, um, just to see how it went. Right here? Yes, yeah, sure. Alright, so I'll zoom in remember. Yep. Okay, so, Judy, how did it go? It went well. Yeah? Yeah. No, no pain? I know it was a little bit more noticeable towards the a end, little. Right? A little bit in the end, yeah, because yeah, maybe yeah. the medication went off. So yeah, well you did great, um, and the eyes are a little bit red and irritated now, but like a mm. week, as I said, a week down the line, um, it's going to be a night and day difference. Did you have a chance to look at the the previous corneal tattoo we did? Yes, I did. Which is pretty cool, right? Mm -hmm. Are you looking forward to getting that yourself? So there's um retouch for this. Yeah, if it needs be, it will fade a little bit, and once the eye dies down a little bit, it looks a lot better. Um. The last guy, his name was Will, really, really nice guy. Exact same. He Immediately after the procedure, he too thought it was a little bit red, a little bit inflamed. Um, Dr. Chin told him, look, just let us settle for the week, and when we we'll see you a week out, the difference will be night and day. So it will be. Yeah, because I noticed in the, in the lower part, it's not round, like the same. Yeah, it's, go yeah it's going to... Because I know my sclera is more swollen, so right, the roundness yeah, yeah. is and, not really perfect. And when the sclera comes down, yeah, exactly. It's going gonna, it's gonna to look rounder once the sclera comes down a little oh, bit. Okay. It's sort of distorting a little bit at the moment. But you did absolutely great. Um, I just want to grab Dr. Chin really quick, um, just so we can take a seat beside us and we can... So you did this for, like, cosmetic? And you want to just be able to look yeah. people in the eye? Right. That's exactly what the, the last guy, William, did for as well. So he is extremely, extremely happy. I'm sure you're going to be extremely happy too. So, yeah, we're just waiting up. Dr. Chin's just finishing up with the. Hey, Dr. Chin, if we can grab this for two seconds. So, I'm not sure if Dr. Chin realizes we are live. <laughs> He's just finishing up putting away some of the instruments. It's hard. To come back here when next week? You are going to come back here. Are we seeing you for a one day post op as well, or just a one week? One week. No, I don't, we'll have to, we'll have to check. Um, I don't believe so. One week, and then you'll see a huge difference. And you're going to be on some drops for the first couple of days, and um, just to help with the swelling. So you did absolutely great, Judy. So we'll talk now about the, uh, how uh, Judy is going to feel after the surgery. Like what? Medically, yeah. explain a little bit medically because she is a little concerned about the swelling around the sclera stuff like that. So Dr. Haluja is going to explain very briefly what to expect in the coming week. Now, what we will ex explain really quickly is about the contact the ambu disc, and you'll feel some. You said like you you should have you should feel some bubbles behind the contact lens. See a few bubbles, but that's absolutely fine. You shouldn't feel anything, um, discomfort, anything like that. Five to seven days, the ambu disc should be completely dissolved. Um, and there is a contact lens in there, so you might feel the contact lens a little bit, but other than that, that should be it. 
the contact lens is. It's already in there, so everything will stay. But um, well, the, we put the AMU disk, which is like, uh, um, brain. This will dissolve in five to seven days, and we put above it a bandage contact lens. This will we will take it off like in eight to ten days. Okay. So we'll get Dr. Chin now. That would be good. Yeah, so everyone's explaining now what um, Judy will expect in the coming days. So, yeah, we're just um, finishing up now. We're going to see Judy for an immediate post operative appointment, and then we're going to have her on our way. She's going to rest up for the next 24 hours, um, chill out. Clearly, even though it's a tattoo, it, it is a surgical procedure. So we've prescribed her some drops to help with any risk of infection, any risk of scarring, nothing like that. Okay, that's all taken care of. Um, safety is number one here. That's why we're only doing 100% non-cutting lace sec. Um, so I mean, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this, and we just want to get one, one final word from the surgeon, uh, Dr. Chin. And just to, so he can explain um, to Judy what to expect in the coming days, how it's going to improve. I already mentioned briefly how the last guy, William, um, improved massively in a week. So I'm going to hand over to Dr. Chin. Okay, so um, you have to just, you know, uh, chill out. When are you planning on going back to work? After a week. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, you can go back to work on Monday, really. Okay, so uh, the amniotic membrane graft is going to dissolve underneath the contact lens. Normally, take out the contact lens at one week. It's going to dissolve about five days, okay? So underneath it, you're not going to really notice. So um, if you were, if that were a sighted eye, I guess you would see better and better as the amniotic memory graft dissolves, but it's not a sighted eye. Um, your eye's a little bit red, so we're going to put you on um, uh, a mild steroid. I talked to your uh, primary ophthalmologist, and he already agreed to that. So we're going to put you on uh, Lodomax four times a day, okay? So you already have that prescription, right? Yes, I do. Okay, did you start it yet? Or? Not yet. Okay, so you're going to start Lodomax uh, four times a day. And then um, to prevent infection, we'll probably have you take an antibiotic a, a couple times a day. So um, uh, do you have any antibiotic drops uh, or not? Um, I have erythromycin and ointment. Oh, okay. But I don't think the ointment is going to be that great with the amni amniotic uh, membrane graft, right? So, uh, yeah, I don't think so. So let's just give her an antibiotic drop, right? Like a drop's better than the ointment, right? Yeah, I think it's better, okay? So uh, why don't you have Matt uh, write a prescription for like Cipro or something like twice a day? Okay, so you're going to take the um, Lodomax steroid job four times a day and then Cipro uh, twice a day. That's uh, my mouth. Is no, 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 sorry. You're a nurse or something. Like uh, it's a Cipro uh, eye drop. Yeah, okay. And then um, and then just you can go back work on Monday. I don't think you're going to have to take the entire week off if you don't want to, but it's up to you. Um, do you have any other questions about, and, and like the rep was saying, you might notice some little bubbles underneath that, but don't worry about that, little air bubbles. Uh, do you have any other questions? Um, is my going to be have a retouch? Because it don't, for me, it don't look round like the left eye. Well, look, we're going to have to uh, give it, we're going to have to give it like a little bit of time. So um, it's really hard to to tell exactly how it's going to look. And, and to tell you the truth, we can't go too much more peripheral or you're going to get a lot of bleeding because we're into the sclera, you know, so. I know before I came here, my sclera is swollen. I know it's not totally healed after the muscle repair two months ago. Yeah. So the roundness. Of well, I thought you just had muscle surgery by the other doctor, right? So I really think we should probably wait at least a month or two, make sure everything settles down, and then see what we do after that, you know. So, but we don't want to go too peripheral right now because it's going to be a lot of bleeding and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so um, any other questions? Or much it? Okay, so uh, I think it's a good case. Uh, hopefully people learn something from it, uh, ophthalmologists as well as uh, lay people. We had a couple uh, eye, eye doctors attend this as well. Uh, so this is my first, I think, Google Hangout. I thought it was a positive experience. I want to thank uh, Judy for participating because, um, you know, uh, it's, it's nice for her to participate and help other people. All right, guys, thanks a lot for attending. Uh, everybody say goodbye, just wave and all that, and uh, that's it. Okay, thanks a lot. Just in time, too.